Hello reformers and welcome back to a special feature of Medieval Kingdom Wars. Now this video is kindly sponsored by the developers of Medieval Kingdom Wars and so last time we checked out the skirmish mode which is actually well fleshed out for an early access pre-alpha title and if you would like to check this game out then the link is in the description. Anyway. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the campaign, as you can see here. Lead your nation to victory in the 100 years. Oh, yes. Oh. So let's go and start a new game. As you can see, I've already got a bit of a save there. I've been playing around a little bit with it. And we're going to be playing as the Kingdom of England because, well, that you know, I'm English, so obviously that makes sense, right? Well, there are a number of other choices that you can make here. All of these start in different places on the map. So if we just take a quick look around, you can play as the Holy Roman Empire, you can play as Austria, you can play as Grenada and Portugal, and even you can even play as the Papacy if you want to have the Pope and, you know, all that sort of thing. So that's pretty cool, in my opinion. Now, you have three different difficulties here. Yeah, easy, medium, and hard. We're just going to play on medium. We're just going to keep it simple. And we are starting with the city of Dover. Now, there are different kinds of, shall we say, classification of town and city and all that sort of thing. But in this, they're called towns as far as, wait, is it cities? Yeah, I think it might just be cities and hamlets. Now, hamlets are things that are quite easy to take, but you'll see. of her ancestral French provinces, even while dealing with an invasion from Scotland and working to forge alliances with the other great states of Europe. As a minor noble in service to your king, your first assignment is to rise through the ranks of the kingdom. Assemble your team of advisors and improve your hamlets. Be prepared to defend your holdings against raids by foreign lords. Soon, you can start to cautiously expand your holdings by assaulting neighboring hamlets and towns. There we go. So yeah, I do apologize about that. It seems like the music level is a little bit too high in that introduction there, but I just, you know, just lowered it a little bit. So anyway. As you can see, here, here, my lord, it is 1336, and your affairs are in a terrible mess. Early access hath been proclaimed, and all our plans for commercial and diplomatic glory will have to wait a few weeks. Our hands are tied, and really the only course of action is war, so let's get started, shall we? Yeah, so this is basically saying, hey, we don't have trading in just yet, yes. Curse this early access. <laughs> I'm a trader, not a warrior. We shall make the best of it, my lord. Select your army and travel to nearby hamlets and towns. Use the attack button, and so on and so forth. So, a little bit of a mini tutorial there. Allow me to wish thee the best of luck, my lord. Myself and my fellow advisors will join your campaign over the next few weeks, bringing you options for trade, town management, economy, and so much more. Yeah, now there is a full research tree that we're going to be taking a look at a little bit later on. Now, we're currently in a real-time simulation here. So if I could actually see anyone, you would see that the other lords are actually moving around. Obviously, I'm not moving around right now because I'm a bit lazy. Nah. But anyway, You're what we're going to do first is we are going to make sure that we have the right units where we want them. So basically, I've come up with a bit of a strategy kind of thing, and we're going to try and, you know, get that going here. So we're just going to raise our tax rate up to 100%. Now, I don't know whether you know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you know about this game, maybe you don't. There is a silver drain system in place. So when you are inside your city, you cannot be attacked obviously. So I'm actually just going to pause the game here for a second because I don't really want to be attacked just yet. But when you're inside your city in the city view, when you go into the city, 
nothing happens. You can't be attacked or anything like that. So the developers were just like, okay, so how can we solve this? Because players are just spending way too much time lazing around in their cities, drinking all the wine. But no, no. Anyway, seriously. They added a silver drain system, so you have this currency up in the top left here. I currently have 1,750 of it, and if you raise your tax rate over time, you're going to be gaining a good amount of cash. As you can see here, we have 481 to gain, so let's do that. There you go, so there's another little bit there, and now we have 2,231. Now, you lose about one silver every, is it every 10 seconds? I'm not entirely Do sure about that, but we're going to see how that goes. So, first off, what we're going to do is I'm going to transfer some of these siege engines and things. And I'm also going to be transferring the pigs into the garrison because we need food, right? So this is how you transfer units back and forth from your army into your town. This interface could be a little bit easier to use if I had the shift key to select multiple units at once. But obviously, we don't have that many to deal with anyway. So it's not really a big deal for us to just do this manually. So anyway, I'm going to be Yeah, here's the thing I, I, I kind of I kind of want to get rid of most of the militia and the hunters are not particularly good as it is, but let, let's just leave it how it is right now because you'll see the kind of thing that I'm going to be going for. So let's enter our city right now. Managing your town costs silver, which will drain over time. Proceed? Yes. Yes, let's go inside. Right. So the first thing we want to do is improve our army strength. And to do that... What do we need to do? Well, we need to build a barracks. We need to build a number of, you know, different troops. And as you can see here, welcome to city view mode. It allows you to build up your city before it is attacked. Currently only constructed buildings, constructed walls, trained units and gathered resources are saved. Wall mounted siege saving is not currently implemented, but will be added at a later date. All right, so there you go. I just lost two silver. I think I'm going to be losing two silver because we're over a certain threshold. We just have too much. Too much silver. We're losing about two silver every five seconds, I think. So, yeah, that's that's fine. It's absolutely fine. So let's send our serfs to go and get some wood and to go and kill some pigs. So, for the most part, what I'm going to be doing is just putting all of them, with the exception of one group, on the wood. Because wood is very, very important early on. So we're going to try and do that. Now, this is a resource drop-off point, this horse cart over here. So hopefully what I can do, yes, we can move it over here because these guys, they're going to be just going to our manor, but these guys over here, they're going to have a huge travel time coming back and forth from these places. So I'm going to place this horse in the middle between these two and, you know, just give them a little bit of an extra point to use. All right. So Apart from that, what we're also going to be doing is we're going to be building some stone camps and iron camps because, as you can see, I only have 650 iron and we are going to need much more of that. So did I just build a stone one or an iron one? I, I just built a stone. Okay, so there you go. So let's build an iron one now. And our goal for these is to upgrade them as much as possible. So upgrading them to level 5 and so on and so forth. I'm actually going to be building multiples of these. So let's get another stone camp. Oh, I don't have enough wood just yet. Almost. Almost. Give me more wood. There we are. Yes. All right. So there's another stone camp going on there as well. And we also want another iron if we can get the wood required. So we just need to wait a little bit for that. But... Basically, this is all to prepare us for potential attacks. So, in other words, you need iron and you need stone to upgrade your walls. And also to, well, I would assume, I haven't got there just yet, but I would assume to upgrade your weapons and your armor and all of these things. So it's very, very important to have that. And also, if you think about it, if you have a really, really big stockpile, I did showcase this in the previous episode, but the marketplace, the market building is very, very important. What that can do is you can just trade as many pieces of stone as you like for 
as far as I'm aware, gold and silver and all that sort of thing. So basically what that will mean is that you can just have everything that your heart desires. Now, do bear in mind that the prices of those things, they do suffer from diminishing returns. So the more you use the market, the less effective it gets. So I'd recommend just going and fighting a little bit to have that reduce over time. Or you could just wait, I suppose, if you wanted to. But anyway, we're going to continue getting these stone camps. I, uh, yes. I, I suppose what I could do is upgrade a couple, but I think I'd like to build... Wait a minute, do I have two stone already? Yes, I have two stone, so I only need irons now, really, because iron is very kind of difficult to get, whereas stone is much easier. So, yeah, I'm going to just be going for another iron here. There we go. Now, my end goal for Dover is to have all of these walls be stone, especially these ones at the very very front here. And also Bill what I'm going to be alert. doing is... Billman on alert taking these billmen and all that sort of thing and putting them into our army because we are going to need those I suppose but I'm going to try and get rid of the hunters so once we get back onto the world map I'll just delete them or remove them or whatever the case may be and let them go on their merry way because I, I don't think we're going to be needing those oh okay well what is this every single time every single time I do a, a I do a recording there seems to be um, a, a developer or a community manager or something along those lines in the chat. Isn't that nice? That is really, really nice of them. So, yeah, as you can see, they are in the chat right now. So if you wanted to, you could quite easily have a chat with them and suggest something. So, you know, if you wanted to add extremely powerful something or other, then you could, you know, you could speak to them about it. But anyway, all right. So let's start upgrading some of our buildings here. So I'm going to just upgrade this stone camp. And this is going to cost us wood, of course, but that is necessary. There we go. That's level 4 already. That's nice. We should probably upgrade our iron camp a little bit as well. Well, it seems like I don't have enough. I don't have enough. All right. Should I get some more serfs? Maybe it would be a good idea to get some more serfs. I'm not entirely sure. Eh. Yeah, I mean, they're not actually even taking this wood at the moment, so it would probably be a good idea to get some one more group of serfs just to deal with the wood in this direction. I'm probably just going to move the horse and carriage over here because that is a, a pretty nice central location between these three points because the food is being dropped off there and the wood from over here. Oh, and actually the wood from over there as well. So that's pretty cool. And otherwise the wood from here. Of course, as far as I'm aware, I haven't actually tried this because I've never run out of the trees here, but I suppose what you could do is you could order your serfs to dismantle some of these buildings and then that would give you wood that way so that would potentially be something you could do i'm not entirely sure if that works does it yes i think it does it actually does work that's really cool they give you the freedom to just do whatever you so desire you can basically take it from trees you can take it from your poor innocent peasants buildings i'm sure they're going to be really happy with you if you decide to do that ah uh, anyway all right so yeah as you can probably tell i don't have access to the variety of buildings. I don't know whether you saw the build menu before when I was selecting the iron camp and the stone camps and so on and so forth, but I'm going to just show you the build menu in a second because you're going to notice something. If you've seen the previous episode, then you'll notice that we do not have every single building unlocked, and that's where the research tree comes into it. Now, the research tree is quite unique in the way that it doesn't just need turns or time or anything like that. It actually needs special resources that you can gain from capturing hamlets and towns. And you can even trade for it if you so desire. So there's obviously that to consider as well. So that's why I currently don't have the market building available, which is kind of sad, but well, you can't really do much about it at the moment. All right, so I think it's probably about time that we get our barracks up and running. Ah, almost. Our barracks is almost ready. All right, so we have three iron buildings as far as I'm aware. Do we? Let's go back over here and make sure that we have four of them. Okay, so we have a level four over there. We have a level one. Okay, yes, I'm going to need to upgrade that a little bit. As you can see, there's also a night and day cycle. So, you know, if you exit and go onto the world map now, it will be 
nighttime. And oh yeah, did I mention that there's also a season system? So when you're playing on the world map, the seasons can actually change. So there's also, you know, chilling frostbite to worry about in winter and sweltering heat in the summer. Well, probably not in England, but well, you know what I mean. Anyway, we're doing pretty fine so far. I need to upgrade this stone camp. Why did I not upgrade that? That is pretty awful of me. But yes, anyway, as you can see, I, for every single upgrade, I need wood and I need iron. So getting iron is, is very important to upgrade your buildings. And that's also a reason why in the previous episode, I did not have higher leveled units because you can actually upgrade your buildings, you know, for example, your barracks and your archery range. And you th you'd think that it would actually affect your siege engines, but it doesn't. The leveling system does not affect them because they technically can't gain experience, if you know what I mean. But anyway, let's start building our barracks. And the higher level your barracks and your archery range are, the higher level your units that you produce can be. So in other words, if you have a level 5 barracks and you get some billmen to come out of there, then they'll be level 5 billmen. Very, very powerful units. So what I'm going to try and do is once I have built this, I'm probably going to exit from here and allow the trees to sort of refresh themselves because at the moment that's the system they have going on here where you exit a town and then you come back in after a while and the trees and the resources will be back. With the exception of the pigs, you're going to need to get a barn for some pigs. And there's the barn, 550 wood it will cost. Maybe we should do something about that? Maybe we should get a barn? I mean, I don't have too many pigs remaining. Do I have too many pigs remaining? It doesn't look like it, actually. I have, a, I think, maybe two groups remaining, but I think I have enough food as it is. Do I? I think I might have enough. So it, it might not even be necessary, but anyway, let's just continue upgrading this. That's to level 5. That is to level 5. There we go. And that is to level 5 as well. All right. So now what we're going to be doing is going over to our barracks. And we only have six spaces, which is kind of a shame, but it's, it's okay because we need to upgrade this building first. So let's just upgrade it at least one level. The upgrading takes no time at all. So you have, you don't have to worry about that at all. It's really, really quite good. Anyway, let's go over to our world map and see what's going on because I'm going to need to transfer some units and swap things around a little bit and then we can get ready for our first fight, which is going to be pretty cool. But do bear in mind that in the early game, I've actually received a couple of reports, I guess, that the auto-resolve system is a really, really good way to kind of start off things. Because when you first start off, you don't have the most powerful army or you don't have a lot of buildings available. So auto-resolving actually does make a pretty decent difference to things. So you'll see what I mean when we actually get into it. So what we're going to do is just transfer these mace men and these billmen and all that sort of thing around here. Let's just transfer those. There we go. And... Yeah, these serfs can stay in here. That's absolutely fine. We have six serfs. That's great. We have four. Oh, we actually have four pig groups. That's actually pretty good. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting rid of the hunters and all these guys as well. So I'm just going to be putting these in here. And I'm going to be deleting them, basically, because I, I don't really I don't really see a necessity for them. You'll see why when we get into it. But Yes, it's not really necessary right now for us to have them coming along with us. So I'm going to take these ladders as well. And these militia can go there. There we are. All right, so that's nice. Okay, so if you can see here, Dover has currently an attack value of 54, or a combat value, should I say. And our army has 34, which is not very good. Not very good. You'll see that that will be increased very, very nicely. So... Before we go back in, let's collect our taxes. There we go. We gained another 400. That's pretty nice. And we can now go inside. All right. So we're back inside here. And as you can see, the serfs are already attacking the trees. But I'm going to micromanage them a little bit because I don't want them all focusing on one area. I feel like that is just not... That's not very efficient, is it? No, not very efficient at all. So we're just going to separate them a little bit. All right. So now that we're inside here, it's probably a good idea that we... Just kill off a couple of these guys 
And I know what you're thinking. Why are you killing off all your units? Well, that's the thing. I have a much better way of getting really, really good combat ratings. And, well, as I say, you'll probably find out very, very soon. There's a huge amount of blood everywhere. Yes, just ignore that, everyone. Yes. Uh, that's hilarious. Okay, so, yes, let's just upgrade these because we are gaining some more wood. There we are. Upgrade that as well. There we are. Okay, so we have some pretty nice levels for our iron camps and our stone camps. We have three iron camps and two stone camps at level five. That's really, really nice. And what I'm also going to be doing is just taking out all of these guys here. So I'm just going to select all of them and I'm just going to kill them all. There we go. We're, we're a mass murderer now, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, yes. So, these bowmen, they're absolutely fine. You know, I, I'm not saying anything against these bowmen, but personally, I would much prefer to use units that are higher level. So, for example, level 5. You know, if we had level 5 bowmen in the garrison here, let's just say that the combat rating would go way, way higher. So, we're going to try and do that. Also, we could technically upgrade our inner stone keep here. So it's 25 stone per segment and 1200 iron. So I think we might as well do that. Let's just let's just get a good start on that and then you know it's just going to build this. This is all the early game. The early game is all about just getting all of your resources, all of your defenses and making sure that your army is the best it can be initially because you don't want to lose the first fight do you no you don't so what we're going to do is just continue upgrading this build level and i'll see you when our barracks has started producing units all right so as you can see our barracks has reached level five i've also stockpiled a little bit of wood just by waiting somewhat just because i want to show you the you know various units that you can get here now obviously the billman that's absolutely fantastic. They wear plate armor and helmets with unique face guards that have increased re resistance to incoming arrows. And then, of course, you have the Mace Man here, which is just an affordable infantry unit that's really good against infantry, but weak against archers and cavalry. So obviously that's a bit of a shame. So we're going to be going for Billman here. I'm going to try and build as many as I can. And we're going to go for about, I don't know, maybe... Hmm, 15 to 18 maybe if we can go for a little bit more than that maybe 21 or something like that i think i think how many can you have in your army i think it's 25 i think i think it is 25 i'm not entirely sure let's let's just see how it is but we're going to start building some billmen here i'm going to get 12 of these and i have enough for that so that's good and then let's just get another nine of these and that's Hopefully going to be pretty good. Now, the upgrades, what they do is it reduces, well, the technology research cost. Obviously, we have no technology unlocked right now because we just haven't researched it in the research tree. And it also reduces unit cost by 8% and production time. And as you can see, units produced that can level up will start at the building's level. Now, as far as I'm aware, you will be able to upgrade the barracks further than level 5. But again, you're going to need something to unlock... The ability to do that so in other words probably a kind of research that's probably going to make a difference there so i'm going to just place these guys over here as you can see they're level five in the previous video all of my units were level one so obviously that makes a huge difference to how effective they are in combat all right so this is done as you can see so that's pretty nice i should probably lower the gate just in case. You don't want anyone coming in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, got, there's not going to be any enemies, but you never know. All right, and we're just going to buy the stone wall fort upgrade there. That's going to spend a little bit of our stone. And we've already stockpiled a bunch of iron already. So it's not really necessary to worry about that too much. We're also going to get a, another stone wall upgrade over there. I've also built an additional stone camp. I didn't feel like two was enough, so I built an additional one over here and leveled that to five as well. Now, if you want, you can build whatever you like. I mean, you can build as many stone camps, as many iron camps, as many whatevers as you want. I'm just doing things the way that I think is pretty decent because obviously I do get the walls up and running pretty fast and... We're also able to defend ourselves pretty nicely as well with the increased production of units as well. So 
Otherwise, I think it's a good idea to get another stone keep upgrade there. We're using uh, quite a bit of iron, aren't we? Yes, we're using quite a bit of that, but that's okay. That is okay. As you can see, we can just upgrade all of the walls, which is just pretty crazy. Is there actually another another point where I can upgrade here? No, it seems like that is that is the final one, but that's that's enough, I think. There's a lot of stone going into these things. So that is pretty cool, anyway. And I think, do I have enough, actually? Yeah, you can't build tents, by the way. Because your garrison can only hold 30, as far as I'm aware. You can't build tents. Your serfs can't build tents, at the very least. So let's just hope that I have enough. Oh, I don't have enough space. Ah, oh, I don't have enough space. Okay, well, I guess nine billmen will have to be enough. And then we'll just get nine macemen. And then we'll be able to go rampaging throughout the land. And see if we can maybe take something in this first episode. And in the next one, we'll probably be focusing a little bit more on actual battles on the campaign map. Instead of doing auto-resolve, we're probably going to try and do a couple of attacks, a couple of defenses, and have a look at what the AI is doing as well. So, when we come back, in just a moment, I'm going to be going around and attempting to fight a couple of hamlets. Alright, so we're back on the main world map here, and as you can see, full in my garrison is a huge amount of rather wonderful units. And I'm going to be transferring most of these units into my army. And then we're going to be able to go rampaging throughout the land and see what we can take. I'm probably going to start with the village over, well, the, the hamlet over to the left. And uh, yes, yeah, so see what we can do with that. Obviously... Each town and each hamlet that you take does have its own separate taxes. So you will be able to take those things and then obviously tax them as much as you like. And then, well, then good things happen. Yes. Okay, so as you can see, my uh, combat rating, I guess you could say, is 124. Now, if I wanted to, what I would be doing now in my... In my other game save, what I did do was, considering, uh, yes, you see Dover, it only has six combat rating, which is absolutely awful. So the one thing that I could do is, what can I do here? Replace Surf with Billman? No, I don't want to do that. Thank you very much. Okay, so can I, ah, I can actually recruit them from here, but do they, do they actually cost silver? They do. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's something that I did not do. I actually went into the city view screen. Anyway, point is, I'd recommend, if you're going to do the same thing that I did, I'd recommend going into the city and making sure that you have a good enough defense so that you yeah, don't get absolutely sense, yeah. murdered by the first thing that turns up. Because one of the lords from Calais over here decided that it would be a good idea to try and take Dover from me. And, well, suffice it to say, they didn't really do a good job because they only had 26 combat rating. And Dover, my Dover at that point, had about 120. So it was pretty, yeah... Pretty easy fight. But anyway, we're going to tell, tell these guys to go over here and see if we can take the first hamlet. This should be... This should be pretty simple. Should be pretty simple. So let's see if that's actually going to... Let's see if that's going to be the case. If you so desire it. Dream and take to the midships, my lord. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so launching an attack cost silver. Yes, there we go. Okay, so auto-resolve it. How's it going? Ah, oh, there we go, we did it! Yes, and we gained some Our wine. Yes. So, as you can see, we lost no units with the exception of two siege ladders. So that's great, that's absolutely fantastic. Alright, so, let's select this, and then what we're going to do is we're going to increase our tax rate. You can go inside here if you so desire. You can go inside and you can build whatever you like. As you can see, we're playing on medium here, so I've just now, because we were able to take this, just now been able to gain another level 5 band of mace men, and also level 4 band of bowmen. So if you wanted to, what you can do is you can transfer these units back and forth between each other. So, for example, I have a bunch of level zeros here, level 1s, I guess. But what we're going to do is we're going to just transfer these guys out 
and just get the level fives. Isn't that fantastic? I think that's really, really cool. And now we have an even stronger You're army. Now what I can do really. is I could easily go from here over to Dover and just keep transferring units back and forth. Because this hamlet is pretty easy to take and I'm pretty sure that any unit, well, any enemy unit that tries to take it, would probably be able to take it back pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. So, yeah, there's not really any need to worry about defending the hamlet so much. It's much more important to defend Dover. So, anyway, let's have a look here. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, so we have 207 silver here. I'm going to collect the taxes. There's some handy buttons here that can scroll you through the various towns and cities that you own. So, pretty easy. Pretty easy to get, you know, from place to place. Now we're going to attack this town. This is Maidstone. And we're going to achieve victory. Yes. All right. There you go. We got some wax as well. All right. So we... Oh, we lost a huge amount of our siege engines right there. That's... That's kind of harsh. But thankfully, each, every, each and every hamlet that we conquer has additional units to replace those. Obviously, in here, they don't really have too many siege engines, and they do have some pigs, so I suppose I could transfer these pigs away, but obviously they need food as well, so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, these guys have militia level 3s, hunter level 4s. I'm not going to be taking any of those, but you see where I'm going with this. You see where I'm going with this. Once you take all of these hamlets around here, I, in my other save, I've taken Ipswich, Chelmsford, Kings Lynn, Coventry, and so on and so forth. And I was just about to launch an attack against Norwich. But obviously, I need to upgrade my forces a little bit. And there's one of the season changes. Yes, so it's just changed into, I would assume, autumn. Is that autumn? Or, no, I think it's probably summer. I think the, the one before that was spring. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. Stay tuned. There's going to be another one coming where we will explore more of the battle mechanics in the campaign setting. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.